Yeah, the international season is harder for you because you never get to go back home, really. Yeah, a few of the guys did, but um, a lot of us stay over here and kind of see what Europe has to offer. There's a lot more white water. Yeah. First up, Alison Burrows. I believe you're rooming with her brother. Yeah, yep. Ian is my roommate. And, well, we were travelling with Ali for a month in July. She's been training really hard, so she'll be looking to improve on her last few results. Yeah, this year hasn't gone to plan. Uh, Leave Ali made the final, came 8th, attaching 14th, Prague 16th. As some of your uh, compatriots. Oh, she's ready to cheer for her. Running okay. down with them. So what are the strengths of Ali? Uh, well, she's pretty good at, um, you know, trying out new things in the boat. She's been working really hard at a few new techniques and... Um, Does she train with the boys? Uh, the last month she's been training with the us boys and Nick Smith in Borg, so... She's been paddling a lot of big water. She's, I think she's feeling pretty confident at the moment. And we'll see how it goes. So she goes direct there. She's a little bit low, but she's pulled it back. Yeah, she lost a little bit of speed, but still managed to get back in line. And uh, she's looking good. Yeah, so you can see she's switched hands there to switched again. So. Trying to keep the drive on, on an onside rather than working the cross bow. Also and gaining popularity in the C1 men's, I think. And today, is it a, is it a, a coach decision that said, now switch here, switch there, or is it just an instinctive uh, feeling? Uh, I think, it, yeah, eventually it becomes instinctive, but there are points where it's advantageous to, to switch, and you, I guess you learn where that works over here. Obviously, working the upstream side on the crossbow is a lot more effective. Actually, the Australians uh, kind of started to switch with uh, Jess and Oop, There's another two-second penalty, sorry. And, uh, well, yeah. That's going to be another penalty. Yeah, so unfortunately, a few touches. It's going to hurt Ali. But yeah, you're right. Jess kind of pioneered it, and Ali's really, really embraced it as well, and it's working well for her. It seems to be a very solid run today. If you look at the semi-finals, there was 18 seconds between the first and the tenth, and so certainly escape for to getting some time together. Oh, nice. and that looked really good. Like she entered that pre-last upstream with a lot of speed, but unfortunately she's in getting in trouble in yeah, just at the exit. Struggling sure to keep why. her bow up. You can see from the great overhead pictures is the, the flows of the water there's another touch unfortunately i think that the mistake she did in uh in gate 20 or uh, 19 kind of cost her lots of time and, and she wasn't as focused as she would have been at the finish touching the gate 22. yeah but she can say she was leading the final that's right, and she was still nine seconds faster than her her first run in terms of world well, raw time without penalty, so there's some promise there looking towards the world champs. Clara Lothabal, she's 15 years old, I believe, she's 16 October, so she's she's very young. She's a really, her. really young Spanish paddler from uh, the Basque country, and uh, really smooth, really light. Uh, she paddles K12, but uh, not not with the seniors, but she was racing in both C1 and NK1 at the Junior World Championships in Australia. And um, she didn't manage to pull out good results this year. She's 13th in the final in, uh, in the juniors. Yeah, but uh, so she had mistakes. They had they had good team races though, but her, her semi-final run was uh, pretty impressive. Like really like in the line and not pulling too hard. So. And how's she going today? Two seconds penalties. Let's see where she's on the split. Yeah, I think she's in touch. She's just doing her run. We saw that Ali did a few mistakes on, at the bottom part. And uh, so we'll see if she can just go faster by going clean and, and smooth. And she's looking good right now. 
Although she's Spanish, she'll train on this course frequently, but as she's still at school and obviously from the other side of the country, it won't be as perhaps as, as much as she'd like to. That, that was really good. Yeah, I think staying off the poles is really going to be pretty beneficial for her in comparison to Ali, but she's boat's moving quite nicely at the finish here on second, third, and she's a really sweet up left there. Well, very much in touch, just slightly down on the split time, but Ali lost eight seconds of penalty points in this last section, so it's all to, all to go for now. Just waiting. Was that a touch? Yeah, it looks like she was just a little bit too tight. Now, four seconds on so far. The time point of reference is 1.37. So, barring disaster, she's going to be well ahead of that. As I mentioned a few minutes ago... Uh, I think she will be faster. One thirty-three, so moves into the first place and <laughs> happy. Yeah, she's happy with that. She she knows she did a, a few mistakes, but so far she's been doing uh, good runs, uh, no big mistakes, and uh, I mean she's just 15, so she's just taking the experience and uh, and she should come back on the next races stronger than ever. From a youngster, we go to an experienced 17-year-old, Miren Lazan. Lascano, sorry, another Spanish. She actually came uh, sixth in the Europeans in Vienna in the full, full level. Yeah, Spanish are are having a really strong C1 woman this year, and uh, like all of them are are really young. She's another Basque, so it's another one, another person who can't train every day. Uh, I don't know if she's. Yeah, she's probably living in the Basque country, but some of them, sometimes the Basque comments that you hear, so I'm not too sure who actually trains in the Basque country or in La Seo. It's looking really nice so far. That's a tricky gate, gate nine. Well, well up on the split, so I can see five seconds almost up so far. And she doesn't look like she's going too hard. That seems to be the general kind of way of Sayo. The people that don't look like they're going too hard are usually the ones going the fastest. It's using they're the natural super field. efficient on the water. And she just picked up a penalty in gate 14. But I think she was four seconds down on the split. So. Well, she's still 3.26 seconds up with only two seconds of penalties, which is looking good. And again, we probably maybe up to a hundred people following her on both banks. Yeah, there's a lot of support from the locals here running down cheering. We had a little bit of trouble in that uh, right upstream, but she managed to avoid the touch. Unfortunately, I think she just picked up another touch in gate 20. But yeah, gate 20 is proving tricky, isn't it? The whole bottom part is, is tricky. It's Time to go for 137. Is it? 133. Yeah, moves into the lead. She lost quite a lot of time on that on that bottom section. She had a uh, three seconds. She was three seconds up on the second split and uh, just lost like another two seconds. There. Is it because it's more tricky, or is it because the fatigue is coming in? It's definitely a combination. You know, the last three gates. No, don't exactly use the water all that well, so you're fighting. You've got to fight quite hard to stay online. And 29-year-old Katrina Hoskova, former world champion, was second in Prague about a month ago, and she is uh, one of the queens of this uh, class. Yeah, we just had a few youngsters, and now we have uh, Katrina, who's got more experience than them, and and she's a she's a strong paddler and can do like really, really cool stuff, using the water especially. When it comes to holes, she's uh, usually really good. I like watching her do on big white water in the Seven Woman. Well, she's only 0.6 up on the split, which might be slightly surprising. I think Miren had a really good top because uh, she was four seconds up 
and then kind of lost some time on the on the bottom, but um, her top was was looking great. Oh, and she didn't manage to stay in contact with the hole, so lost two or three seconds pulling herself yeah, back up. Yeah, probably. Here. But she's clean so far, so. Yeah, that's it. If she can, you know, stay clean and losing a, not a well, little three bit seconds of time up there. on the split. It's all about how she can finish off this last move. Good place to switch here, so keeping the control with the downstream blade. They've all done it. The last three have all hit the inside pole, haven't they, of gate number 20? Well, the, the exit of the upright, is it's pretty hard, and, and you kind of want to be on the inside to make sure that your tail is not going to touch your rock and that you're going to be able to turn your boat to go to the up left. Anyway, she's coming in, which is going to take the provisional lead. Yep. By a country run. mile. Here we go. Yeah, 4.04 seconds, but is she happy? She always smiles for the camera, but you never know. She maybe could have done better. Uh, she's not happy. She yeah. just put the <laughs> thumbs down. Does word not filter through? To say gate 20, they're all hitting it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hard because you want to be quite far left so your tail doesn't touch the rock because if, if you're too far right and your tail touched the rock, you're not able to turn back left and you can miss that um, that up left. Anyway, it's a Frenchie. Yeah, she, she started C1 this year and uh, made the senior team straight away on her first year uh, competing in C1. Uh, she's under 23 K1 woman and C1 woman this year and uh, and she had really smooth clean runs at our uh, selections and and that's what she kind of did in the in the semi final so I kind of want to see what she can do in the final she has one penalty but and where's Caroline she Wallace can go fast uh, Caro got injured uh, during her training camp in Deep Creek she has uh, some problem with her shoulder so she couldn't race this weekend, but she's gonna race Augsburg, try to rest, and she will race the World Championships and probably go to surgery afterwards. Good news, fingers crossed. Lucy was slightly up on this. Split. Yeah, she's looking really good. Just a, lost a little bit of track in there under the bridge to jump into the eddy and really struggled there. But just, just did a really good right upstream using the hole. Yeah making up a little bit of time, but she's lost quite a few precious seconds uh, well, down seconds the down. bridge. That looked nice. Sort of pretty silky smooth style. It's nice to watch. And it's her first year doing the C1. No, I am uh, very impressed with her performance. Yeah. No, the wall Unfortunately, she didn't quite hold her run till the bottom. Uh, just picked up the same penalty as the other girls and then was low in uh, the upstream 21 and just touched uh, down 22. After the medals today, unfortunately, as you mentioned, only a second season in the boat to make a final. 7.2 sec seconds down, so uh, Katrin Hoskeva is still in the driving seat. That's one to people five, halfway through the course now. Halfway through the final, sorry. Next to go, Mallory Franklin from Great Britain. Is the, what she just won recently? She won in Touch, no, Lee Valley, sorry. She won, she in, won Lee in Lee Valley. She Six had a really, really good run, really impressive. Um, I think the quality of her run in Lee Valley was probably one of the best C1 woman run I had ever seen. Everything was smooth and fast and really good. So if she can go fast now, the question is, can she go fast today in this final? Well, she's second in the World Championship. That's a struggle. Yeah, it just the gate. came in a little bit tight there and didn't really have space to work around the gate. Pretty funky water there on the exit. Oh. Right, she just picked up another penalty. So she's two seconds down on the split, but we saw that the, the final part of the course was uh, really important. And she's losing again some time here. 
Yeah. Not one of our good runs so far. Yeah, she's got to work pretty hard now to keep competitive for the podium. Well, there's some work to do, but she can. She is fast, so she could make some of it up. Five seconds down on the midpoint split. Yeah, with four seconds of penalties, that's uh, still pretty impressive. So she can hold it together here. Yeah, because she had two two mistakes, one under the bridge in the dance dance room in the eddy, and and she lost quite a bit of time there, and on the upright at the top, number gate number seven. Well, let's see where she is with the times. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Well, she certainly made up a lot of time there, but finishes in provisional second place. Malu for the last, she's only 20, just 20, but for the last three seasons, she's been consistently on most medal podiums. Yeah, I'm sure she will be a little bit disappointed with that, that run there, but she'll be looking forward to Augsburg and Deep Creek to make amends. Yeah, she's one of the girls who started the C1 at the early, Early years, I remember seeing her in C1 in 2009. And the next one is my training partner, Oriane Rebourg. So. Oops. Oh, come on. She can go fast. I'm not too worried with that early penalty. But uh, I hope she can hold it together. Allez, le bleu. Allez, Oriane. A little bit tight here. Touching the inside gate and then touching the wall that's not fast. Yeah, it's such a narrow course, so it's not a lot of room between the gates and the wall. I think she's trying to push harder than, than what she usually does. And uh, Knowing that she has four seconds penalty, she'll, she'll be going damn, damn, damn and going for it. Yeah, I'm a little worried here. Yeah, she usually tries to like stay more calm and don't push that hard. So, I'm oh, not sure if really she's nice, is in there with him. But she's, she's six seconds off the pace of the split, but it looks like she's making some of that time up. Just kind of missed the hole, so she was a little bit low in that upright. Not as low as uh, Katerina Oshkova, though, but Take another just out. picked up another touch. She did. She did make up some time because she's just like um, three seconds down on the split now. But I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to challenge the Let's top, top C1 woman. Three touches, it's quite a lot. Yeah, she's kept it clean there through those three gates though. Well, 128, the time of reference. She's not going to be too far off. It's, it's really annoying because she's got the skills, but just stupid mistakes again. Well, provisional third place for Maria Rebel. God damn it, it's not going to be a fun evening. <laughs> it's about as strong as language that we're going to accept today. Thank you. Sorry. Three to go. My compatriot, come on, Roz. One last time out. Had a bit of a dicey start to the season, then one in Prague. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be looking to replicate that today. She's working pretty hard in Deep Creek for the last few weeks. It's pretty nice. In between the wakeboarding sessions, though. <laughs> yeah, I heard she did a bit of cross training. <laughs> Cost me. Well, so far, crucially, it's just clear. So yeah, she's in the split, looking nice and smooth, and in touch. Well, she's leading. Yeah, yeah in touch, and we saw that the top part was uh, 
the girls were going pretty fast on the top part and doing mistakes on the on the bottom part so if she can keeps it together it's probably be a really challenging run yeah she's kept it running nice and smoothly under the bridge switches just before that up that was awesome that really was smooth using the hole she hasn't been switching as long as uh, Jess has been or some of the other girls, but she's started to embrace it and I think it's, it's paying off. Well, 1.63 seconds. All you have to do is keep clear, keep fast, and you've got a medal. Yeah, it's the name of the game, fast and clean. But she just picked up one penalty, so she is like probably half of a second down now. Didn't hit 20, but has a but little bit low. Just a little bit low. Many girls were low though, so I think she will still uh, probably challenge the lead. Yeah, she kept the boat track in there through 22 and 23. So and well, 28, she's and she she's can sprint going easy. Going to move into the first position. Oh, nice work. By only five she, seconds. She, she was in, in touch on the on the first two splits, and I uh, did a pretty good bottom, and just is like five seconds up. So. Well, That's why we said that the, that the last couple gates were like really important. Well, there's our first C1 medalist. It's a case of what color? Expect a little bit of noise for the next competitor, local girl born and bred here, Yuria Villarubla. Cheering for your namesake as well. Yeah, definitely. 22 years old. I've been racing uh, with Nuria since we were probably like 15 or 14. We had this uh, exchange races between uh, the area where I live and Catalonia and it was great to see each other next year and have some good races and parties. So I'm definitely cheering for her. Well, she's yeah, eighth really in the nice. European. This is her first World Cup race of the season. Super smooth top third. I think that'll be reflected here in the split. Yeah. Oh, incredible. Four Three and seconds. Half second up, down. Yeah. Uh, up, sorry. Last year she came, made the final here in La Seo, and she came fifth. Yeah, I think she was pretty disappointed with her run last year. Had a big mistake. But she's looking great so far. Not staying in the hole. Not as good as Rose, but uh, she was fast on the top, so it shouldn't affect her too much and no penalty and the boat is sliding six and she's seconds half six down. second half it's incredible oh, this is really nice Banduria. really good run i thought there might be a, a com really tough competition between her and jess and uh, it might actually happen now Oops, another Touching one who's taken two seconds again. Well, the noise levels leading local favorite time of reference to need to beat is 123.39 and she that. will be she will be there yeah. well it's fulfilled their contract well done you 4.3 seconds ahead that's the same time as was uh, sorry as jess had in the first first semi when the yeah, actually she has a 117 and a two second penalty so Fastest run of the day so far. Fastest run of the day so far, but um, yeah, there's two medalists. Better, better wait for Jess. She's another genius of the sport. You never know what, how fast she can go because she can always go faster. So. There she goes. Now 20 years old. Last year she won the world by 13 seconds. In Tachin she won by 15 seconds. Bit of a slip up in Prague, but is the is the real pedigree athlete on this course. In both C1 and K1 women. Mum and Dad are both both over here today. And uh, she's charging. Yeah, she's attacking pretty aggressively. You can see, nice and tight in there. Squeezes the exit. The more the pressure, the more she just puts it on, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can definitely see the difference between her final run and qualification run. Uh, when she's competing in, uh, in the qualification, she's just like 
like taking it easy and just keeping the boat in line but right now she's just like pushing hard we saw in the split she's there a second up from new year villarubla so it's certainly not one yet she's Kids staying in more in contact in that hole so should be faster than noria villarubla in that exact section but we saw that she had a good bottom part so we'll have to wait well 3.6 seconds up. This gets She's better and better. Fine now, yeah. This is looking really nice. The kicks are on the right down Niagara. It's, it's a critical moment now. This is a, the last major challenge. And she's pulled well, it off well. When Jess is charging, I'm not sure there's it's anything that can stop her. It's an exhibition run from Jessica Fox. Well done. That's going to be. That's going to be part of one of the best team one women that we've ever seen. Yeah, well it's done. It's crazy. Well, seven Fox seconds wins. up. That was smoking. I mean, I think that would have been a really good men's see one time. Where would that have? Put over. We got the times here somewhere. Oh, uh, it was a n 98. Nice yeah. That's really, we've just seen a really, really good run here. Yeah, she was definitely as fast as uh, some of the C1, C1 men from this morning. Really good run. Because Jess gets so much media attention, is she, is she, uh, is she a bit of a star in the Aussie team? Uh, she's pretty down to earth. I mean, she seems like pretty chilled out and just like anyone else on the well, team. She's always really, really available, which is great. She shreds all the time. But it looks like she's pretty well known in Australia because I took the plane from uh, the US to here and I met the Australian women rugby team and uh, started talking with those girls and they were like, oh, you're doing kayaking. Do you know Jet Fox? And I was like, wow. So she's actually like a big deal like home. Well, congratulations and certainly deserves it if you can uh, take apart a course that, that convincingly top of your sport there's confirmation if you needed one jess fox wins the gold medal again for australia new avila rubler for spain takes the silver and roslyn lawrence very good second week in a row takes the another medal it's the bronze medal this time with katrin hoskova just missing out in fourth place to the czech republic yeah that was some awesome happening by the girls there be interesting to see the next two World Cup, well, the next World Cup in the world, what they can all do. That's in two weeks' time. We go to Augsburg for the World Cup final. That's right. On the Ice Channel. Be a lot of fun. And then mid beginning of September, it's everyone over to the States to Deep Creek. Changing continent. Yeah, it's the first time in a while that the worlds have been in America, so it'll be a nice change. Cheap fast food and wakeboarding. Yeah. Nuria Newman, Christian Fabris are our guests today. Both top paddlers in their own right. Thanks so much for taking some time to uh, to fill us on on how it is out there. Generally, like I say, is it, is, how's it welcomed by you paddlers? Do you, do you enjoy coming here? Oh, I think most of us love it. It's just like a really small town. Everyone is nice. The people are used to see all the paddlers. And, uh, you know, we usually like, because everyone's staying so close, it's really easy to go for hot chocolate, ice cream, whatever, and spend some good times all together. Yeah, I think Maseo was the first slalom course I ever saw when um, Danielle Woodward won the silver medal at the Barcelona game. So that was the first introduction to the sport for me. So it's pretty cool to come here and check it out. Well, so far, two of the three events. We first saw domination from the Slovakia men in the C1, and then we've seen pretty much domination from the Australians as well, with a local girl pitching in.